It's July the 21st. It is July the 21st, right? July the 21st. July the 21st, 2011. This is Five Away to Show About Worcester. Today on the show is Brendan Malikin. Sir. And Michael Benedetti, and we're here at Cook's Pond. And uh, today on the a show... a pond shot to see if people can actually pick up on the haze that's out here from the heat. I think the pond's actually evaporating. I don't know if this camera has that kind of resolution to pick up the haze, but it is a hot day. It is not. It has been kind of dry. At least the creeks are dry. Is it, has it been dry? I haven't been around this week. I was stuck in an office all most of the week. How would you know? It's climate control. There we are. So, um, today is the day, Brendan. For the last three months, we've been doing shows where we talk about the upcoming city council election. And inspired by this essay called "The Citizens' Agenda" in something, I'm tired today. Inspired by an essay by the by the journalism expert Jay Rosen. We've been asking the question, what do you want the candidates to be discussing as they compete for votes in this year's election? Mm -hmm. Specifically, the Worcester City Council election. And yes, this is a perverse way to think about the election mm -hmm. because people do not vote based on issues, mostly, at least that I've seen in Worcester elections. But we've been asking that question, Brendan. And you know what we're going to do? What are we going to do? People are walking by, and Brendan, Brendan's a little shy today. We are going to go through... Well, there's people behind you as well, too. Oh, okay. Just keep an eye on the, right. the traffic. Okay, fine. Make sure nobody comes up and, and gives me a little wedgie or something. Mm -hmm. Th throws throws my camera in the pond. Um, we've been asking people this question, what issue should we be discussing? We're going to boil it down. We're going to come up with like six, maybe eight issues. Okay. We're going to try to draft questions. Today's show is basically an open editorial meeting of the 508 podcast. Just we're, there's some couple of things where we might talk about. We're gonna talk about, potentially talk about one cool thing in Worcester this week and one annoying thing in Worcester this week, in case we just, in case we, in case things go too too fast. But um, otherwise, the the loyal viewers are gonna be invited into the inner sanctum. And the, right. The inner we're not talking about Nazis. We're not talking about bridges today. We're not talking about any of this news. We're talking about issues for the city council election. We're gonna come up with six questions, maybe eight questions, six eight issues, and we're gonna really focus on the election through that lens. This list we're coming up with today is version 1.0 of that list. A month from now, we, we'll do revisions and do version 2.0. A month from then, we'll do a revision 3.0. But every week when we're t looking at how the election's going, the questions we're going to ask is, we're not going to say... Are there enough months left between now and the uh, well, election? Well, August would be... August would be during August, we would cover 1.0. Oh, okay. During September, we would cover 2.0. Mm -hmm. okay. And during October, we would cover 3.0. And then also the part of November. So we're going to look at the election through the lens of these, these six to eight issues. Like basically, if something goes on that week, electoral-wise, you know, if some, if some candidate comes out and, like, barf bag Marty Lamb, mm -hmm. gives out a bunch of souvenir barf bags, we're not going to cover that. No. Even though it's fascinating, even though it's interesting, even though that's the kind of thing about, I love about politics, we're not going to do that. Because you know where you get barf bag news? The Telegram. Worcester we'll Magazine. The pundits. We're getting professional here. Jordan Levy's all over barf bags. <laughs> if some candidate comes out and gives out a bunch of... Kazoo's. We're we're not doing kazoo news on this show. No kazoo news. You know, like this is it. This is this is a show for people who are you know above kazoo's. Not necessarily people above who kazoo's. Are own their own kazoo's. People who have people who have the sort of mental illness where they care about Worcester politics. Yeah. You shouldn't. I'm not saying you should care about Worcester politics. A you normal rational person would not care bar. about it because it's just such penny ante crap. We're but raising the bar. You were raising the bar on mental illness. On this, we're celebrating it on today's show. Okay, so. We're going to come up with these issues, and, we're, and then a month from now, we're going to revise this list based on your feedback. And a month from then, we're going to revise it again. Based on, some guys are canoeing. You can't see them because they're so tiny, so I'm not going to violate their privacy. You won't be able to recognize them. A month from then, we'll have version 3.0. So if you think that these questions is, are dumb, these issues are dumb, give us feedback, and we'll keep revising it. But we're just we're just going to focus on these issues. So here's so here's a bunch of stuff, Brandon. I'm just going to read a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. and and we're going to try to figure out which of these are going to make it through the first pass. If something, if you think something's worth coming back to, give me, give a shout, and oh, we'll, put, we'll put a check mark on it. We got a, uh, we got a notebook. Oh, also, I wrote the word 508 on the back of this notebook. The official. Which I'm going to start doing. We're going to start doing this as part of our credits. This is 508, a show about Worcester, starting over the show. Okay. Um, I have this steno pad that I'm going to be writing down the official questions in. Okay. What's your position on school privatization? That's my question, so I'm definitely going to mark that, that we should come back to that one. Um, yes. no, absolutely. Also, we should point out that we've been constantly talking about questions we're going to ask the candidates when they're on the show. And yes, city council candidates, some of them come on this show. Whether it's a good idea or not, 
I can't, uh, question. <laughs> and, and, the, and the two questions we're going to ask people in addition to specific questions for that candidate and in, in addition to the six to eight issues are we're going to ask them how much can you bench yep. and wh who's your favorite character on the wire. Mm -hmm. Okay. So those are already, those are shoe-ins as far as questions, but they're not issues we're going to cover. Although if somebody brings it up during a debate, either of those questions, that would be kind of awesome. Police record transparency. This is also my issue. We're going to come back to that. Yeah, it's, yeah I mean, that one should be really transparency in general, just the idea okay. of government transparency in general. But right. that's well, nice let's... to have a specific there. There you go. Uh, equal opportunity. Mm. I don't know what that means. Affordable housing. Okay. We, should we come back to that? Is that worth Maybe? I, you know, to be honest with you, it, no, I don't think... It, it, I, the thing this is, is where it gets crazy. The thing is, a lot of these are important issues, but the question is, are they important issues to you, me, and, well, and the three also, people who watch the show? They are important issues, but sometimes the way the issue is framed is misses the point as to why it's important. Like something I think we've actually talked about on the show before, you can make a good argument that the reason that Worcester has such a terrible time with its economies is because of affordable housing. It's okay. so easy to own a home here in Worcester that you end up with a higher rate of homeownership. And most cities that have higher rates of homeownership also in parallel have higher rates of un unemployment. Because when you, an economy gets bad or a business move. closes, you just can't move, right? So his, Worcester has historically higher uh, than average unemployment rates. That seems nationwide to run in parallel with cities or towns that have higher than average rates of homeownership. So affordable housing, huge issue. But is it actually oh, should we be discouraging? Right okay, so this is, I'm going to say homeownership, and we're going to come back to it. Because that would be kind of a mind blower, actually, to ask people. Yeah, I mean, I, nobody's going to discuss that issue. Well, I mean, because here's the th again, not to, to, to harp on this one all, all night, but I mean, you've, we've got an issue in the city where we have more housing stock in Worcester today than we had back in the 50s when we mm -hmm. had a higher population, right? Now, one of the things that goes along with that, we now also have an unoccupancy rate for housing. That's, I think it's 8% last time, in that range last, okay. last time I looked at it. So, I mean, we're, we're still building houses because it's a great way to create jobs, do it, doing that, going that route. We're expecting people to move into them. I'm we coming closer to you because it actually yeah. looks better on television. Ignoring the fact that we have you can keep backing up this huge, I'll just keep the going right into the water. That would be great for television too. We have this huge, uh, you know, uh, open, uh, we have this huge issue with, with vacant homes in the city that, you know, could be rental units, right? I mean, like, why, aren't we ex why aren't we expecting people to rent more than we're expecting people to buy? So yeah, simple uh, home affordability, home ownership are huge issues. I would be shocked if anybody actually drills down into the issue in the appropriate way though. Dual tax rate. Yeah, I mean, it's yes. given, but, okay. it's, uh, the, the, but the, we can only have six the, issues. The question so is, <laughs> i got about 50 things I'm going to read yeah. off on this list. The question yes. is, do Thumbs we come up. back? So, okay, we'll come back to that one. Small small business in the city. Sure. Quality of life. Well, yes, and that one needs to get rolled into like six or seven other right. things. Public safety slash police layoffs slash community policing slash deputizing citizens. Yeah, that's one that needs, yes, but it needs to be fleshed out really well. Like uh, Teacher layoffs and education. I don't want to ask this. I don't want to talk about anything about education. If honestly. we were going to have two we're columns for you know the uh, school not, committee and the city council, maybe. But we're not coming back to that yeah. one. Homelessness. Didn't we solve homelessness in Worcester? Like I don't six feel or like. Seven months ago. I feel like homelessness is a question that's really important to me. I don't know what. I, I don't feel like the city council. Well, no, are the because people the city ask. council is signed off, on, signed on to programs that are basically uh, kind of trying to acknowledge that Worcester has cured homelessness. You know, it's it's a. It's an issue, but it's not one that I think people I don't wrap wanna, their arms around. I don't want to ask people. I don't want to bring that up as an issue. That's not, to me, that's not a key issue for this campaign. Let me put it that way. That's a key issue for humanity and, like, oh, civilization. Like, right? homelessness is my issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if, you know, homelessness and beards. Beards even a, sec, a distant second to homelessness. From personal issues to me, not something I want to ask these candidates about, though. If, right. we're, gonna, if we're going to ask them six or eight questions, if we're going to talk about six or eight we things... We don't want to waste time. We're not no, going to waste time yeah. about homelessness. Uh, communication and improving citizen involvement in government. You know, I, I, I like me, it, but at the same time, we've joked about this before. Could you really have a more accessible form of government than the city of Worcester? Like, right. if you can't actually track down that sounds and, like and a no. harangue your local I'm going to keep officials. pushing you to make these quick. That sounds Sorry. like a no. Okay, municipal unions. What? Uh, what? Okay. Bo <laughs> boards and commissions. Sure, another one that, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's important. I don't, eh. I don't, what, are you, what are we going to actually discuss? All right. I mean, we would we would say, did they talk about boards and commissions? Did somebody come up with a strong stand about boards and commissions? Okay. Uh, why do you oppose neighborhood councils? That's, that's a question a I want to ask. Right. I want to ask that. But that's one that you can wrap a lot of the things that we've mentioned that you've mentioned okay. into. Well, so we're going to come back to that one. Uh, crime watch slash police involvement in crime. Uh, I think crime that watch. comes right in. It goes well with neighborhood councils. You know, I mean, it's, okay. it's more dealing with granular issues. Do we need more slogans for the city slash any questions about marketing plans for the city? I think anything involving a marketing plan for the city is a good thing to All discuss. Right. Uh, building relationships with constituents. 
RMV fees, Corey, Chins. These are all important things to me. Nothing that I'm talking about. Youth homelessness. See homelessness. Youth jobs. Uh, overregulation of the city. I think we have to talk about that because just because this is like that's all we talk about on the right. show. Yeah. Is, is I think that's regulation. a good one. The, the others that you just rattled off. I mean, I think the. Uh, I don't think there's a lot there. That's yeah right. Um, what do you want to see Worcester become slash vision for the city? That I think is huge. But okay. it, it, it also is one that you're going to get a bunch of people sitting around. I'm going to keep cutting you off. Shopping. Yeah. Poverty. Uh, well. Tr- transition slash sustainability. I think sustainability is something I want to ask about. Yes. Uh, foreclo- home, foreclosure crisis stuff. I don't See, that's one I don't know enough about to be able to ask. You know, how about this? We, can we make a promise that we'll just give Grace Ross, like, her own show to talk about uh, foreclosures at some point in time? And Grace can come on the show, Because sure. the, I think the issue is, is there anybody that's either running for or on the city council that would have much to add to the conversation regarding foreclosures? Do they know enough about, you know, the Making you know, Home Affordable Act, you know, to actually have that conversation? Decision-making and people feeling, citizens feeling disenfranchised. Uh, something that Joe Hart brought up, we should start finding dro- motorists and s- bicyclists for anything possible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Not, I disagree with this, and I don't want to ask that question. Yeah, no. That's, that's What's the deal with Union Station? What's the deal? Here's with one that I can't even. Oh, d- downtown development, sidewalk repair. Trans. Uh, I'm not gonna be. Some some people, you know. Oh, Who the, wrote all these whether questions? or not we should move the transit hub somewhere else. I have 157 slash. That's one that if you can do parentheses, tied in with like the vision for the city thing, because a lot sure. of these are development issues. Okay. And, I mean, those are going to be broad answers, just as long as they're not all marketing doublespeak. We could get something good out of that. I literally wrote on here, 157 slash 10. Keep that one. Just <laughs> in case you remember what it was actually about, it could be profound. <laughs> I am tired this week. School funding, no. No, no, one school question is all. You're lucky you're hitting one school question. Just, I don't, I'm grateful I, bastards. I, there's nothing I hate more than talking about the schools. Sorry, sorry, all the school people on there who are on this show. Our and talk, kids. Sorry, also. future. <laughs> Is it possible for the city manager to be successful while the city council is not? Can a counselor be effective if the counselor is odds with the, at odds with the administration? Those kind of questions. City, some some question about you know city council. Why don't you give the city manager some direction for the city? Yeah, I mean, who's who? Who is who's boss, right? I mean, that's. That would actually be a great question. Yeah, again, for parentheses, to draw a bunch together. we got to think of a way to formulate a question to actually ask uh, new and, and incumbents, more importantly, to give us their best high-level overview of what is actually in the charter, right? Actually explain their understanding of the city explain charter because that you. is key to, like, that relationship, right? Like, we can talk about relationships between the council and manager till we're blue in the face, but if the people who are actually sitting <clears> in those seats don't really understand the relationship, it doesn't matter. So okay, so here's so here's where we are now. Here's here's the ones that we have that made it through our first totally arbitrary round of decision making, which are what's your position on school privatization, police record transparency and other transparency, affordable housing and home ownership, the dual tax rate, small business, quality of life, public safety, why do you oppose neighborhood councils, crime watch slash police involvement, a marketing plan, regulation, what do you want to see Worcester become, sustainability, one fifty seven slash ten. Is it possible for this and, and st- stuff about the city manager and the charter? Okay, I'm gonna write a note of what these all are real quick. Um, okay. Hi everyone. This is 508. This is 508. A show about Worcester. Show okay. About um, okay. So we've got school privatization. Let me write these down. These are the possibilities. This is like some. This is like Sesame Street, a weekly reader or something. School privatization. Transparency. Just to stick with your theme of hating uh, Here, questions. Here, you can hold this. Yeah. You want. Just to stick with your theme about hating questions regarding the schools, that school privatization question could probably be reframed as like, how do you feel about selling city services or privatizing existing services? Well, that's like the big one, though, right? What's I mean, that? Is the, is the schools? Is that's... it though? I mean, you know, we we sold the airport. That's to, to another you know public entity, but still sold it off. I mean, I, I think. Is the school budget in most of the city's budget? Um. Well, yeah. I mean, it's an enormous component of it. Sure. But that's it. Would be arguable to to uh, to try as to whether or not it's the capital maintenance portion of that budget is what drives it so high. I mean, other other cities are selling schools. You know, Boston's selling a ton of its school buildings and what have you. Both the buildings and it's uh, it's not as much money there as people might actually think. One 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. So we have to get we have to get rid of we have to we have to get rid of at least five and potentially seven of these things on this list or combine them. I feel like tax rates and small business stuff is kind of the same thing. Yeah. Um, I feel like quality of life and public safety you said is kind of the same thing. Well, I, mean, I feel like yeah, a lot of this is going to smush together, right? I mean, because uh, some of this is uh, you know, like how do you feel? I'm about cutting one fifty seven slash ten off. Done, That's it. Done, Forget no it. Math. Forget it. All right. So now no we're done to twelve. Now we're done to twelve. Somebody's somebody's falling in the water over there. People right, safe. So. All right. If we have to if we have to save lives on this show, we will we'll do Get it. On tape. We'll do Get it. On tape. I'll turn the camera off. Even if that's what it takes to save a life, I'll turn the camera off. I I'm doing naked water. See if Jordan Levy will do that. If Jordan Levy was going to save somebody's life, would he turn the camera off no, first? No, keep the camera on. I'm getting naked before I save a life. I've actually done water rescue, and I want to do it naked just for the camera. <laughs> just to screw it up on YouTube. That's why you're going to do it naked. Um. Huh. What? How are these? How are these shaking out here? Okay, I feel like regulation is definitely one I want to talk about. So I'm going to put a star by that. I feel like school privatization is one I want to talk about. Um, did I even write down neighborhood councils? Oh, no. Oh, shit. Replace 157.10 with uh, neighborhood, councils. neighborhood councils. That's something I want to ask people. That might not be really an issue to view the election through, though. That just might go in under questions about the wire. Again, there's a couple other things, though, that have to do with um, citizen involvement that things could wrap together with so the, the neighborhood right. councils. And so, right. So really, we're looking to we're looking at can we formulate a brief question about this? Is well, we can. Looking. Not on air, though, because that would just be mind numbing for whoever is watching. This it might I, already be mind numbing. Seventeen minutes of this already. <laughs> I would, don't worry about boring people. That's already been taken care. <laughs> it's been accomplished. Um, well, Brandon Mellican looks at these questions and tries to think of how to combine them. Or, or something entertaining. We're now. going to talk about something cool in Worcester Magazine this week, which is that there's a there's a feature called Visual Melodies. And this is basically they got six local artists, I think six, who also draw, including, for example, John Short, Michael Penny Leslie, Eric Yankis Franco, Helen Beaumont, Shane Hall, and Mr. Jamie Buckmaster. And they all drew something and they all wrote something. And, like, it's pretty cool. Like... You know what I like about this? Two things. Number one, it acknowledges that this is something which is on paper, so this should have large visual stuff and a lot of visual stuff. And number two, it's something that tele Telegramming Gazette could not do. Could not do. It is impossible for the Telegramming Gazette to have Mike Leslie draw something for them. It's impossible. It, should, it could never happen, right? I think we should pose it as a challenge. If the Telegramming Gazette can do it? Yeah. Victor Infante? Step up. <laughs> you Make go it for happen. It. Have Mike Leslie do some original art for the telegram. We don't care where you hide it in the in the paper. Um, man, if we have school privatization, regulation, and neighborhood councils, that's already three of our of our six or seven or eight, though. Get back um, to this, huh? Yeah. Well, let's, let's so let's do let's do. I feel like we should ask, we should ask something about the tax rate. There's some kind of question there. We don't have to come up with the questions today. We can just really come up with the issues. Mm -hmm. What, what, which of which of the ones that aren't that I didn't put a star next to here do you feel like need to go on there? Well, I, to be honest, I wasn't paying that much attention. Oh, thanks. All right. Uh, tax rates, yes. Um, and, you know. Give me give me some no's. Which which of those are you just which of those are you just like you know what this is something but it's not. I think like you said, housing is. It's just like uh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, public safety is huge. But, I mean, let's be honest, uh, although it looks like this is going to be one of those summers where things kind of get really ugly uh, in, in, on the streets, so to speak. Yeah. But at the same time, we're still a city that has relatively low right. um, crime rates. So, I mean, is public, public safety really the conversation we should be having at all right now? This is, you know, this is going to, Brendan's probably going to get mugged in the next week, and then uh, you'll see And that's safety. exactly my point, right? Like, summer, things always tend to get a little bit more heated, you know, so to speak, in, in the city. This summer seems to be like it's already getting off on the wrong foot, but... I'm taking off quality of life. I'm taking off marketing. I'm marketing is, is gone, huh? Marketing is gone. It can go under vision. It can go under. Well, that's why I think brackets are important here. We're going to be like the final four. We're going to drill this down into a... Uh... And see how it goes. Well, yeah. Okay. So... Uh, manager. So let's do... What if we have... That's, that's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. This would be eight issues. Are you ready? This is within the J. Rosen approved number. The issues would be school privatization, transparency, t 
tax rates slash small businesses. Mm -hmm. Wait. What? Yes, tax rates slash small businesses. You know what, can you rephrase that? Frame it as revenues versus development. So, like, instead of small business and tax rates, just write one thing, revenues slash development. Because the two go hand in hand, right? It's just a matter of how we're going to spend our, our treasure here in the city. And it doesn't have to always okay. be a small business. It's, there are other School things. School privatization, transparency, regulation, vision for the city, sustainability, this relationship of the council and the city manager, neighborhood councils, and revenue slash development. These would be the eight things that we're somehow going to come up with a question about. That's a kind of impressive list. Here's, here's, so here are some questions that we can just do right now. Are you ready? Here, can I give you the camera? Of course. Okay. What's your position on school privatization? Does that does that one need to be like explained in a, in the form of a question though? If they yes, but this is this is that's the core of the question. That's that's the core of the question. We could also right. come up with a sentence explaining what this is, and but this is basically what we're going to say. So if and if people talk about this in debates, if people put out statements about privatizing school services, mm -hmm. that will be something that we'll cover. How long are we supposed to be this week? Tw uh, Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Okay. We're not going to swear this week because I'm too tired to edit up the swears. We're I'm sorry. There's an issue we're going to talk about later. It's going to be hard to talk about without swearing. We're not going to swear. Transparency. The question is. I'm not going to write it down, but I'll just say it, and I can transfer. The, the question of transparency is basically. Um, City departments, in particular the police department, mm -hmm. have information that can help the public make good decisions about running the city. That information is very hard to get access to. Some would say impossible. Right. What would you do to change that? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the question for transparency. The question for regulation and over-regulation, what is that question? Um. This is how we played on 508. I do the yeah. easy ones and then bring No, I, I think the, the regulation question needs to be framed around decisions that the that incumbents on the city council have made over the last couple of years. Hot, the, the ones that we always joke about, right? Like hot dogs, pit bulls, uh, signs, smoking, whatever. Right. So I, the question just really can't be about how do you feel about regulating things, right? Uh, it's uh, a broader sort of, you know, what do you feel uh, the city council's role is in regulating the day-to-day -day lives of Worcester residents? So that would be the question, what do you think the city council's role is? And as part of that maybe paragraph question, we would put in there like... Or what is the city's role? I mean, what is what is local government? Because it's really not just the council, right? I mean, the manager proposes... What is local government's to... role in regulating right. the lives of the day-to-day -day lives of citizens, mm -hmm. and then we put in a thing talking about... And is there a limit, right? I mean, you know, that, that could be a multi-part question. I, I don't know how these are all going to be framed to, to individuals, but or presented to individuals, but you know, that's one that could kind of take on a life of its own. I think the question for vision of the city is, what's your, what's your long-term vision for the kind of city Worcester should be? What is your personal become? vision for the city of Worcester? What is your personal vision for the city of Worcester? That's a question. Okay. The sustainability question... Is like it would be something along the lines of like sustainability is something that I think is super important. Trans sustainability, transition towns, and stuff is super important. I don't know what the pointed question is that you asked. Well, this is the thing, right? I mean, it, th that question presumes that everybody who's on the city council and everybody who's running for city council uh, understands that 97% of scientists in the world agree that global warm climate change is a reality and it's mostly a, the byproduct of human uh, activity right or that yeah. that every major oil company as well as the OPEC nations have all declared that 2006 was when we hit peak oil right I mean that like there are some pretty high level things there that the entire world has kind of already come to agreement on that a lot of people in the United States and I would bet the majority of the people on, on our city council are still kind of mulling over what their position is and you can't pose a question about long-term sustain sustainability for a community uh, if the people who are going to be making those decisions it's don't not understand radar. the basics of the conversation. There you go. Well, you know, you know what I think. So we should ask the question, but more is just like to embarrass folks. You know what I think the you know Start how studying up. You kids. know how I think we come up with the question for this? Google Plus. <laughs> I'm putting it on Google Plus as a publicly discussable question. Yeah. What is the sustainability question slash issue? And people can go on there and because uh, that's one that you know it's not like you're talking about reinventing the wheel, right? I mean, there there are communities. There's a lot of this templates. country. There there are communities all over the world that have taken up sustainability 
mostly through the transition model over the last 10 years or so and it works and it's not about you know shutting yourself off and walling yourself off it's the idea that like hey let's just do some stuff local right and because there's right. no harm no foul what's the so okay so we've got three left which are the charter and the city manager neighborhood councils and revenue slash development the question for neighborhood councils will be why do you oppose neighborhood councils that's for the incumbents and for the other people it is what is your position on neighborhood councils mm -hmm. That's a very straightforward question. And this is something that we're going to ask people as fast as possible because yeah. nobody's going to bring it up during the debates. And my personal goal is to try to have the phrase neighborhood council appear in the debate, not just because I'm in the back going, neighborhood <laughs> council, as they drag me away code pink style. Right. And it's a pretty easy question, right? It, I've done stuff with code pink. I know how to make that happen. Just watch out. Okay. <laughs> um, Be okay. wary, David LaBeouf, as you're planning these debates. <laughs> the uh, No, I mean, the... The, yeah, because that is a pretty that, again that goes back to the char the whole like charter idea. Do, are the people running for city council familiar with the charter? Are the people who are sitting in those seats now familiar with the charter? They even know that neighborhood councils are an option. Right. So 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 the so one of the questions we wanted to be what did you, what's today's beer? Another? Oh hey. It's happened was in UFO. UFO. It was in the refrigerator. Pretty cool. You don't have to justify your coolness of beer. This is not a hipster show, man. It's no. I mean, it's, I, um, I'm more apologizing for not knowing what I was drinking. It was a brown bottle. I grabbed it, and it could have been bleach the fastest or something. One. Uh, what's our so? What kind of question do we want to ask about the relationship between the city, the mayor, the city council, the manager, that whole power dynamic? Um, that's a tough one to frame, but I think it it, it needs to be something very basic. Uh, along the lines of what do you think the appropriate relationship between the city manager and the city council is you know should issue you know, it's already too long right should should issues be driven by the council the elected members of, of, of local government or should issues be driven by the appointed members of local government see i think everybody will say they should be driven by the appointed member or by the by the elected people right. but the problem is that this doesn't actually happen day to day you know what this that is for this? the problem you're right and we've only got two minutes left three minutes left i i propose the solution for this question is facebook Facebook? Well, our Facebook, I'm not on Facebook, I know. so I'm not going to partake in this. All question. right, our Facebook page. That's where we're going to have the thing about this. Okay, the, then there's no other social. I don't want to bring Twitter into it because I don't like Twitter that yeah, much. You can't get anything done in 140 characters. You can't get anything done in 140 characters. So the, the last thing is revenue slash development. Write and, letters to us about <laughs> <laughs> revenue slash development. What's the, this is the question which has to do with like the dual tax rate. Right, and this is one that I think can go a lot, a lot of the, um, some of the privatization kind of talking yeah. go into this year it, it's a much bigger uh, question that it you know where where should the city draw the line in terms of taking on the responsibility of development mm -hmm. uh, where should the city draw the line in terms of selling off existing assets but also in, in conjunction with that uh, what are the appropriate limits for local taxation um, revenue generation you know you mentioned Joanne Hardner like ticketing everybody right mm -hmm. not a public safety issue at all right speeding isn't a public safety issue speeding is a revenue generator that's 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 a you know historical narrative, right? Sure. We can call it whatever we want. Well, she was just, talking in particular about even like ta like getting people for like park bad parking. Sure. And yeah. No. It, it, but and again, it, it's even those those things you can justify them as annoyances or public safety issues. They all come down to revenue, and that's where the conversation we should be having is like, where should the city be focused on generating revenue? Do we focus on progressive uh, tax you know tax systems, regressive tax systems? You know, uh, local government, especially around in the Northeast, seems to always focus on very regressive forms of uh, revenue generation versus more progressive forms, and I, that's a debate that we don't have time for in two and a half minutes, but I think that some of our city council city councilors should probably have some uh, solid ideas as to where the future of revenue, revenue generation in the second largest city in New England should be. You know what, so here's, here's a possible question. It would be, how should the city of Worcester be making its money, yeah, right. and, and, what, is the correct, and what is the correct tax rate? Because this is the problem whenever people are talking about, oh, should this tax rate go up or down, is I never know what is the correct tax rate? Like right. if, if, if Moses or Connie Lukes or whatever goes up on a mountain and God hands Connie a tax rate on a stone tablet, what is the number on that stone tablet? There's, there's two of them. Mm -hmm. So potentially this implies that there should be a dual tax rate because right. it's the two tablets. But <laughs> actually, is it two tablets? I'm trying to think if it's ta two tablets or tablets. I think it's two tablets and I don't remember the actual verse. Anyway, um, always, in, always in the drawings, of course, it's two tablets. Anyway, we, we only have like 30 seconds it's left. A strong man. Those well, are our questions. Pieandcoffee at gmail.com. Or pie, yes, is how you contact us to say like... Or Google Plus or Facebook. Or, or Google Plus or Facebook. Whatever. Brendan, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, man. And this has been the Five Void Show. This is Cook's Pond. And guess what, Brendan? What's that? We're going to do one more issue for the people at home. 
Oh, nice. Which has nothing to do with the issues. Okay. I just want to talk about this stupid email on the go list. Yeah, go Can ahead. I talk about the stupid email on the go list? All right. When, so, there's this email on the go list, Brian. <laughs> Tell me about it, Mike. <laughs> about, about Start in the Street, which is like the arts festival that happens... There's like three or three times a year. There's a start festival in the city of Worcester. This it might is, be the only event. I, so I, I'm torn with this because like the symphony is always. We can huge, slow down right? by the way. We have plenty of time. The symphony is always huge on Saturdays. So you get a great crowd for that, like Institute Park and whatnot. Yeah. Like, um, but the start in the street, I think, is probably the one event in the city that brings in massive numbers of people, no strings attached, like all walks of life. Yeah. You know, families, but like all types of families, individuals, just just people, right? Like just people sure. show up to Worcester. So it, it, there's not much to really criticize about that, right? Because if, if, if you don't want to do anything other than hang around with a mob full of people in Worcester, it might be your only time of the year during, like, a, you know, when the weather's nice to actually do that. And it's kind of cool. It's, like, mostly volunteers. A couple of people who coordinate it now take a stipend after, sure. I think, years of just realizing that, you know, they basically have to quit their job for a couple of weeks to, right. do, to put this together because it's so much time. Most people, volunteers, though. It's a volunteer effort. Um... Yeah, I don't know. It costs money to it costs money to get a table there. Mm-hmm. Like some for some artists, this is not appropriate. They're not going to. I think it's eighty bucks right. or something. It's not appropriate. They're not going to make eighty bucks a profit, so they don't want to get a table there. Right. That's okay. So this is the thing. Anyway, this is the guy that was emailing out, and he's saying like, "Oh, like let's have something right next door to start in the street, far enough away that they we're not going to get in trouble, because we're going to quote fight the power, and also so that quote no other group or organization will profit from your lifestyle. I guess your lifestyle is an artist." Are we going to have to... I don't know what that was. All right. Good. Nobody's... Okay. Um, that basically, like, let's just... Because, like, again, like, why should, why should these... Why should these... Why should we have to split... I don't even understand what the argument is here. It just pisses me off. It's just like, start on the street is a good, is a good thing. Like, don't be... If you want to do something else as an alternative thing, like, go for it. Like, why do you have to be tra- running down start on the street? How does that even make sense? It doesn't make any sense. And I think that's kind of the, the, the whole point is why would you... Uh, it, so... How many days are there in a year now? 365, 365 and a quarter. days a year. Uh, so if you want to have like a event that is like the op- the anti-start thing, right? You've got 363. Is it, what would we agree? Sure. 364, 363 days of the year that you sure. can fit that into. Do that. Like, don't try and shit on. Uh, yeah, this is the home. This audience. is the home. Yeah. Audience. So don't try and shit on somebody else's parade just because, for whatever reason, like you're not happy with the way an organization is run. The idea, when when something. It's is, not even that they're not happy with the way it's run. They're happy. He's not happy with the fact that somebody is saying, you know what, we go through all this trouble, we have the streets shut down, and we jump through a million bureaucratic hoops. We do a huge amount of publicity for the artists, so right. that there are thousands of people who will come by. Mm-hmm. And on behalf of that, uh, as part of that, we want you to share the, the costs that it costs us. Right, because it to, actually to, does to do cost this. money to do stuff. In, in, in it does cost money to do things. <laughs> yeah. So they say we will, they say if you're going to per- participate as a, somebody who's trying to make money, mm-hmm. we want you to we want you to split the cost. Right. It's a pretty simple market-based like, system, right? Where but like, apparently this you, isn't you cool enough. Something and you probably will see a return on that investment if people are actually interested in whatever it is that you're selling. This is ridiculous. Well, this, this is the thing. It's like, you know what? Like, if you don't want other people to profit off your lifestyle, take your stuff off of Etsy. Right. Like, <laughs> Etsy isn't a bunch of volunteers. It's not a bunch of volunteers in Worcester. It's actually a business. It's actually a business. And they actually make, like, I think... A lot of money. A lot. They have a reasonable amount of money. They're thinking about going public, actually, this year. So they make enough money to, to go through all those hoops of going public. Justify the expense of like why is it why is it more morally why is it more morally righteous or more artistically cool to freeload off of volunteers and their the publicity that they're doing and all the work they're doing to shut down the street and get a crowd together? Why is that cooler than like giving money to Etsy? Well, I, I think because some men just like to watch the world burn, right? Is that a was that from Batman too? Is that? Oh, from the what's his face, the Joker. Well, it was actually the uh, it was the butler there that, that said that. I oh, uh, uh, Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Oh, yeah. You gotta love Michael Caine. Anyway. Yeah. There's your five weight bonus, Brendan Malikin. There it is. We need we need uh, we need actual nihilists in Worcester. That's what I think we need. Is not these phoned in nihilists. Like if you're gonna take that attitude that's just like we're gonna trash everything and not care about anything, whatever, then go all in, right? Don't be don't be pimping your stuff on Etsy. Don't you know? Don't be selling your stuff at all, right? Like if it's not about money, just give your stuff away. There's, people would love to come over. Is it being a nihilist or just being like a hippie? I don't know. Just I think being a hypocrite. Say what, what you will about the tenets of national socialism. At least it's an ethos. Yeah, at least it's an ethos. <laughs> we just need a beret to kick need around an ethos now. Here in Worcester. I'm kind of aggravated by this email. Anyway, but you know what? Also, I mean, let me just say, as part of our don't hate the, on the gadflies for being gadflies. 
Thank you for participating in your city. Thank you for responding to an arts festival by saying, I'm going to create my own arts festival. Thank just you for... Different day. Just, just, just get your act together first. All right. This has been your special 508 bonus. Enjoy your summer, Wester. Bye-bye. Have a good night.